Welcome hobbyists to some highlights of my latest project. This is the 132nd scale Battlestar Galactica Colonial Viper by Mobius Models. This kit is long out of production and I acquired this one from eBay. As usual I watched a lot of YouTube videos for inspiration before starting this project. So I have highlighted here a few areas of assembly along with all the electrical enhancements. So with that said, let's jump right in. First up is a display. I really wanted an active display, so I went to eBay and found these 0.42 inch OLED displays that should fit. They use an SSD 1306 controller with a two wire interface for programming. Libraries are available for Arduino, so I used a nano board for the initial programming and debug. I had to create a very small character set for displaying a simulated startup sequence to scroll across the screen. Searching through various videos, I was able to find some screenshots of consoles for startup, Cylon alerts, radar scanning, etc. I then took a best guess for the scrolling startup text as it was based on these very poor screenshots from the original TV series. Switching over to an AT Mega 328, I breadboarded the circuits and started a program and designed the various lighting and sound effects with the display module. Here is the schematic representation of the design. I added an SR602 motion sensor that will go in the nose cone and a DF player audio board for the sound effects which will be in the engine area along with the speaker. Power will be provided by a 3.7 volt LiPo battery and I'll use the charger circuit I designed previously for use in my other projects. I found a very small ice blue LED for a battle damage and electrical short effect. I really like using these multicolor flasher LEDs for the sci-fi projects. I used a couple solid and variable color flasher LEDs to get a mix of blinky lights for the cockpit area. My next issue is how to light the helmet since I wanted something like the TV series. Using my LED tester I started experimenting with various LEDs and settled on using a very small 0201 series surface mount LED. This particular LED was a Z series from Evan Designs. I masked out a very thin line around the helmet bottom so that after painting is complete, light could still shine through. I increased the limiting resistor until I had the right amount of light balance. My next task was to design a development board around the AT Mega 328, same as what the UNO board uses. The board has options for using MOSFET drivers for the LED lighting or direct I.O. connections. This design has four programming modes and I needed to debounce the programming switch since it is going directly to a hardware interrupt pin. For this I made a 555 timer development board that can be used for this and other 555 projects I may have in the future. Now that I'm doing more surface mount boards I needed something to keep my parts together and I really love this ESD safe storage box from Adatech. This version can hold various component sizes all the way down to small surface mount parts. I'll add a link for this in the description below. And one other thing. I've heard various modelers talk about these rechargeable rotary tools, so I finally ordered one and it has been great. My Dremel tool is usually too fast and tends to melt more than cut the plastic, but this one can do really slow speeds and can use many of the same attachments as my Dremel. Uh, this is now my go-to for grinding and cutting any type of plastic or styrene. Now onto the cockpit. I ordered a photo etch set for this kit since I knew I would be lighting it. 
I also thought that the pilot needs a more defined seat, so I cut up some short planks of styrene and made a seat for him. I now have the cockpit assembled and I've added a plug for the pilot so he can be removed if needed. I've mounted the OLED display and glued in the fiber optic strands. I'm starting to add the LEDs for the panel areas and I decided to use a more rectangular 1206 surface mount LED. There is also very little clearance between the cockpit and the outer body so I mounted the LEDs facing out and used some metal foil tape to diffuse and reflect the light back through the panels. I then used black liquid tape to cover areas that may allow light to bleed through. Working my way around the cockpit I eventually fill in all the areas where light is showing through. Now to do a final test run before I mount the cockpit into the body. Before I completed the front assembly, I had to figure out a way to attach the landing gear doors flush with the body. The kit did not seem to have a good option for this. After some measuring, I found that using a 1mm and 2mm thick styrene would work as a good base for the doors. I used a similar method for one of the rear doors. I now have the cockpit and fuselage together with the support plate for the landing gear doors. I'll be using a couple of different glues to secure the door panels in place. I used one of the rear landing areas to mount my control parts. I used magnets to hold the landing gear cover in place and hide all the controls, but they are still easily accessible. The control area includes a main power switch, battery charging LEDs, a programming button, and a charging port for the battery. I now have the rear assembly together. Some of the detail work has been completed and I've run fiber optics to the guns. I felt the wings needed a little something extra so I added fiber optics there as well. The battery and charging board are now mounted and I'm sliding the two sections together while pulling the wires through to the back of the model. Just in case I need to remove this section in the future, I use CA glue along the bottom rail to hold the two pieces together. The engine intakes hold well enough without adding any additional glue. To finish off the fiber optics for the guns and wing lights, I'm using liquid glass to act as a lens to cover the end of the strands. Using a toothpick, I add small amounts of the liquid glass to the opening and the end of the strand. I'll repeat this for the other gun and wingtip lights. So now the guns and wingtips are done. Now for the final electrical assembly. There are a lot of connections and I have to shove all of this into the engine housing. So this should be fun. This took a while so I sped up the video. I started with mounting the switch debout circuit to the main board. I'm adding some hot glue to help support the board and keep it from moving. Also I'm securing the wiring. Using my wiring diagram, I start to connect all the inputs and outputs to the AT Mega development board. 
This includes the SR602 motion sensor, the DF player board, programming switch, and all the LED connections. I will add a connector for the engine section so it can be removed if needed. All the I.O. connections are now complete and I'm starting to combine all the power connections together. All mounted and ready for the engines. As I was working on the engine lighting, the best effect was to have the LEDs set back a bit. Others have also noted this effect in their videos. There are holes for a 3mm LED, but the ones I selected are 5mm ultra bright blue. I did not have room for an LED support structure inside the engine area, so I used some clear sprue as a standoff for the LEDs. I mounted the LEDs to the back of the engine assembly, adding foil and liquid tape to prevent any light leakage. I continued to wire up the engine housing for the LEDs and engine harness connector. Heat shrink tubing was used to protect all the exposed wiring. And after all that I had to start over because the engines would not fit. The LEDs set back too far, so I removed the standoffs, glued the LEDs directly to the back and resealed the whole thing. Here's my painting guide for the pilot, bodywork, and weathering, and the full itemized list for you. The model is finally complete and it's time to charge it up. I connected my custom USB charging cable, USB to a 3-pin plug, and charged the battery. And now to go live and fire it up. There are four programming modes available, night light, motion sensor enable, disable, audio level, and sleep mode. The orange control LED in the cockpit flashes for the mode selected. It also indicates when the motion sensor detected movement. The night light level is adjustable using the programming button. Press it once and hold on that press for a high to low level adjustment, or it can also just be turned on and off using a single press and release. This setting will be stored when the power is turned off. The audio level is adjustable with the same programming button. Press three times holding on the less press and the Battlestar Galactica theme song plays while the audio level is being adjusted up and down. If you just do the three presses and release, it increments or decrements by a level of five. This setting is also stored when powered off. The motion sensor can be enabled and disabled using two button presses. The gun sound effect plays when enabled or disabled. Sleep mode is enabled or disabled using four button presses. All cockpit lighting is turned off except for the pilot's helmet. Engines are reduced in brightness and the remaining LEDs remain active. Gives about 10 hours of power before needing a recharge.
Pressing the button another four times will wake it from sleep mode. I hope you enjoyed this video and a thank you to those that have subscribed. Please take a look at my other projects and if you are not yet a subscriber, please consider doing so. It is so great that there are so many people sharing their work with these videos. I love watching them and I continue to learn and improve on my own projects. A big thank you to those that inspired me on this project. Thanks for watching and see you next time.